Forget everything you know about saturated fat. Seriously, most of the stuff that is ingrained in our minds when it comes down to saturated fat is a product of old science or just misinformation. Truth be told, saturated fat is absolutely critical when it comes down to burning fat, and it's even more critical if you're on a low carb, high fat diet. I'm gonna give you four really unique ways to get saturated fat in your body. We're not talking about by eating fatty cuts of meat or eating a ribeye. I'm talking about four unusual ways. In fact, four ways that you can get it from different kinds of oils, because most oils don't have saturated fat. So let's go ahead and let's break this down. Hey, you're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. We got new videos on Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, at 7 a.m. Pacific time, and a bunch of other videos throughout the week as well. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Okay, then I want you to go ahead and hit that little bell icon so you turn on notifications. It's gonna let you know every single time I go live or every single time I post a new video. All right, let's talk some saturated fat. So first off, I wanna break down the whole cholesterol thing. By eating saturated fat, you're not gonna raise your cholesterol. Let me just paraphrase this real quick. Okay, 25% of the cholesterol that's in our bodies is received from our diet. 75% of the cholesterol that's floating around through our bodies is already created within our bodies. So the correlation between eating fatty foods or eating cholesterol or eating saturated fat and our overall cholesterol levels is relatively small. Okay, most of the time, the body has a set point with how much cholesterol it needs to make that's genetically already predetermined. Okay, and it's gonna stay with whatever it can to stay within that range, okay? So we only absorb small amounts of the cholesterol from our diet. It has to be in an unesterized form. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. I'm gonna spare you the details for time's sake. Okay, but let's go ahead and get to why saturated fat is so critical. Saturated fat makes up like 60% of your brain. That's a huge amount of your brain. Now, we don't know for sure that if you're deprived of saturated fat, if your brain actually shrinks, but what we can determine is that cognitive decline and some deficiencies in overall brain function can be linked with poor intake of saturated fat. So yeah, we actually need it. Now additionally, our myelin. Our myelin is the sheath that is the outside layer of a nerve. So for example, when the nerve is traveling from the brain to a different area of our body, it has a fatty layer on the outside of it. This is called the myelin sheath. Without this, we are susceptible to all kinds of nerve stress and literally susceptible to all kinds of other stresses. Now, I say literally because if we are not protecting the nerve, the nerve can get triggered by all kinds of things and make us more stressed, okay? And plus, we need saturated fat when it comes down to calcium absorption. Now, you're probably tuning out thinking, calcium, who cares, osteoporosis, whatever. No, <laughs> think about this for a second. Calcium is what actually allows your arteries to clog up. That's what contributes to plaque. So we need saturated fat to allow calcium to get into the bones. So if calcium is not getting into the bones, it's hanging out in your bloodstream, in your arteries, and that, my friends, is what's contributing to plaque, okay? It's not the saturated fat itself. You think your body doesn't have the ability to flush out saturated fat? Come on, our bodies could create additional bodies and have genetics that do amazing things. You think it doesn't have the ability to flush some saturated fat out? Yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and break down four kinds of saturated fat that you can start getting. Number one is palm oil. This one's the forgotten one. Everyone always looks at these other oils. Palm oil is usually sitting right there next to the coconut oil. It's got a nice little reddish yellow tint to it because it's high in carotenoids and it's super high in saturated fat. We're talking like 14, 15 grams of fat per tablespoon and we're talking usually seven or eight grams of saturated fat within a serving. Now, the interesting thing about palm oil, it's high in something known as palmitic acid. Palmitic acid used to be thought of as a bad fat. It used to be thought of as this dangerous kind of saturated fat, but unfortunately what it was, it was just this generalization where we were grouping palmitic acid along with other saturated fats that we thought were overall bad in the first place. The interesting thing is palmitic acid is critical when it comes down to what is called cell membrane flexibility. The cell membrane flexibility is what makes a cell permeable. It is what allows traffic of molecules and nutrients to go in and out of a cell. So if you don't have that flexibility in a cell and you're on a low carb diet or you're eating a lot of fats that are good for you, those ketones can't even get into the cell right because the membrane is so rigid. You need that fluidity and the saturated fat, specifically the palmitic acid, is what is going to contribute to that flexibility. The other thing that we have to look at is palmitic acid has now been shown in the last couple of years to be a precursor to what is called PEA. PEA is a natural anti-inflammatory and even an analgesic within the body. So yeah, the saturated fat that you consume can contribute to lessening inflammation within the body, which therefore lessens the risk of atherosclerosis and increases the ability for nutrients to get into the cell. 
Okay, so it's really important. Now, one other thing I want to note here. So we've got palm oil and then we've got palm kernel oil. They're actually quite different. Okay, whereas palm oil is, you know, 50-ish percent saturated fat, palm kernel oil is closer to 80% saturated fat. So palm kernel oil is pretty expensive though, but you will find it's a higher saturated fat content and therefore an even higher amount of palmitic acid. So definitely a good fat to go for. The next one I wanna talk about is cocoa butter or cacao butter. Okay, I'm not talking about regular co cocoa or cacao. I'm talking about cacao butter, okay, the high fat form of it. This stuff is still gonna be in the ballpark of 14 or 15 grams of fat per ounce with eight or nine grams of it coming from saturated fat. So really powerful stuff. Plus it tastes really good. This is the kind of stuff that you'd melt down if you were to make white chocolate, for example. You would melt down uh, cocoa butter and then you could add some sweetener to it and you could make white chocolate. It's just to give you some context of what it is. Now what's cool about cocoa butter is it's high in what's called steric acid. So of course we have a lot of saturated fat, but of that saturated fat, we have steric acid. Now there is a study that was published in the journal Nature Communications that found that steric acid played a big role in the upregulation of oxygen consumption, but also therefore fatty acid utilization. So what it does is it helps what's called mitochondrial fusion. We create energy in the mitochondria of our cells, okay? Now the mitochondria has an inner membrane and an outer membrane. So a membrane kind of just around the, the center of the actual cell or the mitochondria itself, and then another membrane around that. What happens is those two membranes fuse together throughout their entire process of creating energy. It's called mitochondrial fusion. When that fusion occurs is when it allows oxygen to get into the mitochondria. Without oxygen, the mitochondria can't really create energy as well. Now, here's what's interesting. In order to make energy with oxygen, mitochondria has to combine the oxygen with fat, okay? So if we increase the amount of oxygen that's going into a cell, therefore we increase the amount of fat that's going into a cell. So yes, steric acid indirectly increases our overall fatty acid utilization. Saturated fats can help you burn more fat. So you definitely wanna make sure you're adding this whenever you can. It tastes pretty good too, it's a nice creamy kind of buttery taste. Leads me to the next one. Okay, now we're talking about peely nut butter. You've probably seen peely nuts lately because they're taking the low carb world by storm because they're super, super high fat and exceptionally low carb. We're talking like one gram of carbs per serving. So you've probably seen them before, but you may not realize that you can have peely nut butter. Okay, peely nut butter is unlike palm oil or coconut oil in the sense that it's actually more like an edible butter. Okay, you've got almond butters, you've got cashew butters, you've got all these kinds of novelty functional butters that we can eat now. The problem is they're mainly high in polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats. We're not getting the really good saturated fats with those kind of delicious nut butters, right? So here's what's cool about peely nut butter. When you look at just a single serving of it, you're looking at 20 grams of fat, whereas 12 to 13 of it are saturated. Okay, so a robust amount of saturated fats in peely nut butter. Now let's go ahead and make this even better. 33% of those saturated fats are gonna be palmitic acid, and 11% is gonna be steric acid. So remember the last two kinds that I talked about, I talked about the benefits of palmitic and then the benefits of steric. Well, peely nuts have both. So peely nut butter ends up getting palmitic acid and also the steric acid. So we get the mitochondrial fusion, but we also get that increased membrane flexibility that we're after. Really, really cool stuff, but then we make things even better when we add what else is in there. Oleic acid, okay, oleic acid is a very powerful fat when it comes down to upregulating overall body fat utilization because it upregulates what's called CAMP, okay? That's cyclic adenosine monophosphate. What this is, is a process that allows our body to burn what is already stored. If CAMP is not elevated, the body doesn't necessarily register that it needs to be evacuating stored fuel from the body. So without CAMP, the body just kind of stays in a dormant state. Once that's elevated from oleic acid, then we know, okay, we need to start burning fat. So it can effectively start turning on fat burning in a pretty indirect yet still direct way. Now, when it comes down to peely nut butter, there's not a lot of brands out there. I highly recommend that you guys check out Peely Hunters. Okay, They really have nailed it when it comes down to the peely nut butters. My personal favorite is gonna be the pumpkin spice one. We've got a pumpkin spice flavor that doesn't have any sweetener in it. It just has all the goodness of pumpkin spice. And they also have a cocoa one. Cacao one is awesome. Okay, I think my personal favorite is probably the pumpkin spice. 
But the cool thing is, is they've managed to take something that would normally just be a saturated fat nut butter and make it delicious because they know the keto market wants it, they know the low carb market wants it, and they do it right. So because of that, I've gone ahead and I've enclosed a special link down below for you to check them out. I wanna make sure you check them out. So this is something that you can replace your almond butter with. It's something you can replace your cashew butter with. It's something that you can drizzle on food, but more importantly, it's a way for you to get the saturated fats that you need for nerve function and fatty acid oxidation without having to eat just a ton of meat all the time just to get your saturated fats. So big thank you to them for sponsoring this video too and make sure you check them out. Now, let's move into the fourth one. The fourth one is something you may have heard of before. In fact, I'm almost sure you have. It's coconut oil. See, coconut oil, believe it or not, has the highest amount of saturated fat of all the things I've talked about. However, it's not always practical. You can't always eat just a tablespoon of coconut oil. You can, however, eat a tablespoon of almond butter, peeling nut butter, cashew butter, right? But with coconut oil, you are getting an additional benefit. You're getting the lauric acid. Okay? Most people look at coconut oil and they talk about the MCTs that are in it, the uh, C8, C10, C12, the, you know, the overall just carbon chain, medium chain triglycerides that we're looking at. I think the benefit comes from the lauric acid. See, lauric acid with coconut oil, when you consume it, it ends up breaking down into your body into something known as monolaurin. And monolaurin has very powerful, not just antibacterial, but more importantly, antimicrobial effects. So it has almost an analgesic effect. It has the ability to almost laser target bad bacteria within your gut. Eating foods that are purely antibacterial are not always good because it can break down good bacteria in your gut too. When you look at lauric acid, lauric acid has sort of a delivery confirmation method, if you will, for attacking bad bacteria. So that's the benefit of cooking with coconut oil. So out of all the things that I've talked about, to kind of recap, you'd wanna cook with palm oil and coconut oil. Okay? They're gonna be uh, very stable to cook with. Yeah, the saturated fats are very stable, so you're good there. Okay, then when it comes down to the cocoa butter, this is something you usually wanna melt down and add to something just as a flavor enhancer. Or if you get it in chips, you can just eat it straight up. You can eat straight up cocoa butter. Then when it comes down to the saturated fats from the peeling nut butter, this is something that you just enjoy through and through. Okay, just carry it in the car with you, whatever. It's kind of an on-the-go method of getting your saturated fats. So I hope this cleared up some of the saturated fat nonsense that's out there and gives you some practical ways to get these amazing fats in your body. As always, make sure you're locked in on my channel for all the videos that I'm putting out there and post any comments down below in the appropriate section. We'll see you soon.